Hi guys, the powers of B have asked me to work through another uh, curve sketching question, um, paying specific attention to finding the coordinates and the nature of turning points or stationary points. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this question together and hopefully um, the example will help you do your own questions. So the question is asking us to use calculus techniques to determine the exact coordinates of the stationary points on the curve y equals x cubed minus 9x squared minus 21x plus 60. Use the second derivative test to determine the nature of each. All right, so calculus techniques is just code for let's gonna, we're gonna differentiate this question. We're gonna differentiate this question, this function, and we're going to use that differential to find the turning points. So the differential of this, and I'm not gonna use y, I'm gonna just use f prime. It's, I find it a lot more easy to understand. So we've got the f prime of x is going to equal, we've got x cubed, so that's going to be a 3x squared minus 18x minus 21. No, so that's our derivative. And to find the coordinates of the stationary points, a stationary point is when the derivative is equal to zero. So this sort of question would be in the non-calculator or in like a, you can't use technology to solve this. So you're going to have to um, brush up on your algebra skills if you find that, you know, these sort of things difficult. So the first thing we're going to do is to figure out to solve for x here is we're going to factorize by three. And that leaves us with x squared minus 6x minus 21. Minus 21 is going to be 7. So that's going to be equal to 0. Now, we still can't solve there because we still have this quadratic equation in the middle. So we're going to factorize this so we can find, using the null factor law, the solutions to this equation here. So what we're going to do to factorize this, we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give negative 7 and add together to give negative 6. So what we have there, we're going to be 3 bracket x subtract 7, close bracket, open bracket, x plus 1 equals 0. So from there, we can use the null factor law. So I'll just write for your own benefit by... The null factor law, so this isn't the NFL, the National Football League, this is the null factor law. X, coordinates of our turning points, is going to equal 7, and X is also going to equal negative 1. Cool. So, what we should definitely note, so it's, I've seen some kids in tests and exams, they get to here and they think that's well, that's it. What I have, that's all I have to do. However, if you read the question, the question says the exact coordinates of the stationary points. So we have to find the x and the y values so we can actually give these coordinates of the turning point. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these two things to find the y value that's associated with these two x values. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the function, the regular function, this one at x equals 7 and that's going to be equal to 7 cubed minus 9 times 7 squared minus 21 times 7 plus 60. Now, the reason I write this sort of step out, and I'll do this in an exam even if I'm under time pressure, is it, this is where I find that I make a lot of my mistakes. So I like to just keep, I write this part of the question down so I make sure that, um, you know, I'm not going to make a mistake here. So it's a good idea if you, like, find yourself making mistakes at exact parts of a question every single time. Just, like, do yourself a favor and, like, slow down in those parts of the question. So what we're going to do is we're going to then, once we've uh, put all the sevens in, we're going to then uh, just do some mental arithmetic, and you'll hopefully find that this comes out as negative 185. And what we're also then going to do is we're going to then find the function at the other 
turning point, the other x value of the turning point, so that's negative 1. And again, I'm going to go a negative 1 cubed minus 9 times negative 1 squared minus 21 times negative 1 plus 60. And here we have negative 1 cubed is negative 1, minus 9 times negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. 9 times 1 is 9, so we're going to have negative 1 minus 9 is negative 10. Minus my, negative 21 times negative 1 is positive 21, so we have negative 10 plus 21 is going to be positive 11, plus 60 is positive 71. So, then we can find our two turning points. We can write these down. The turning points are equal to negative uh, 1, comma, 71 and um, 7, comma, negative 185. So, We've got ourselves to the sort of halfway point of our question. So it says use the second derivative test to determine the nature of each. So like unless they asked us this, you could say that this is a positive cubic function and you know that that's going to look a lot like that. So the first stationary point is always going to be your local maximum and your second one is going to be your local minimum. But if it specifically asks us to use the second derivative test, let's just make sure we do that. So I'll separate this down the middle. So we're going to, to do a second derivative test. Obviously, we have to find the second derivative. So the second derivative of x is equal to, so we're going to differentiate this. So it's going to be 6x minus 18. And what we're going to do is we're going to substitute um, each of our x-coordinates of the turning points into this equation. So I'm going to have f a double prime of negative 1, which is equal to 6 times negative 1 minus 18, which is equal to negative 24. And then you can, underneath that, I'll put it in a different colour, make it easier. You can say, as f double prime of negative 1 is a less than 0, this is going to be concave down. That's the worst arrow ever. So this is going to be concave down. So the turning the concave down um, says therefore this is going to be a local maximum because it's concave down. It means it's it's curving over, and if at the point where the gradient is zero or the top point is here and it's always concave down on that um, on either side of that point that's going to be the local maximum so then we take the second derivative test at the other turning point or stationary point we're going to have f double prime of seven and that is equal to a uh, six times seven minus 18, which is equal to 42 minus 18, so that's going to be 24. And again, like we did with the other one, we make sure we write our statement down so they can see that we know what we're talking about with the second derivative test. As f double prime, God, as f double prime of 7 is greater than 0,
this means it's going to be concave up. And as a result, we can say, therefore, this is going to be a, a local minimum. So you can see that it's not, the, the math isn't too complicated. We have to make sure that we um, know the uh, different tools to use at each point along the line. But if you do a couple of practice ones of these, I don't think many people will have run into trouble with these, this sort of style problem. So um, I hope my example helped and I'll uh, see you again next time.